When most of us think of God or gods, images of maybe light or a being that's able to live forever with supernatural abilities, throwing thunderbolts out of its arms, things like that, they may come to mind, you know, these type of beings living out in space. There are, however, have been countless people in history up until this present day who have been worshipped as God for various reasons. Welcome back guys to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton and in this episode we're going to be learning about 10 people who were worshipped as a god, whether it's capital G or lowercase g in some way, shape, or form. Starting off at number 10 we have Father Divine. Father MJ Major Jealous Divine was born around 1880 and he founded an independent Christian church in the 1920s. His church was mainly made up of African American worshippers and when certain white people though objected to his church, well, he was sent to jail. And then two days after he was sentenced, the judge on the case just dropped dead suddenly out of nowhere. So they asked Father Divine about it and he said, and I quote, I hated to do it. So this case and his divine retribution made him very, very, very popular and his followers accepted him as God on earth. During the Great Depression, his peace missions opened across America to feed people who couldn't really afford food. And he also preached that he wanted an end to racial segregation. And he's actually now recognized as an early civil rights activist, despite him being viewed as being God on earth. And in recent years though, just less than 20 of his followers remain. Number nine, George Washington. George Washington is generally seen in a class of his own because he was America's first president and he really shaped the United States as we know it today. Now get this, if you go to the Capitol in Washington DC, you will be able to look up at the dome and you'll see a painting of George Washington. This painting here is called the Apotheosis of Washington and in the painting he's shown flying up to heaven. Now, on top of this symbolism of George Washington being a god, he's also worshipped as a kami or deity or god in some branches of Hawaiian Shinto. Number eight brings us to Sugawara no Michizani. Sugawara no Michizani was a scholar and poet in the 9th century Japan. He was a high ranking person in society and convinced that Sugawara no Michizani was plotting treason, the emperor banished him from the capital and made him the governor of a small island. This was a very disrespectful blow, like a slap in the face. But over when he was governing that small island, he passed away. And then in the years that followed, those who had worked to banish him just fell dead mysteriously. And the capital was actually hit with floods and fire and different types of plagues. So these were all linked to the vengeful spirit of Sugawara no Michizani. To appease his supposed spirit, he was reinstated to his high office even though he wasn't alive and then he was later raised to the status of deity in the Shinto religion. Now known as Tenjin, he's the god of learning and scholarship. Jiddu Krishnamurti comes at number 7. Theosophy was a mystical philosophy popular in the 19th century and early 20th centuries. Some theosophists came to believe that the spiritual entity called Maitreya or the world teacher would come to lead the world into a new age. So back in the year 1911, one theosophist thought that he found Maitreya. As a young man, Jiddu Krishnamurti, he supposedly experienced these mystical visions of relatives who had passed away and the theosophists took him from his family in India and taught him the ways of life of the western world to eventually hopefully lead him to become the Maitreya to change the world. But hey, this Maitreya ended up not even really believing in any of this stuff and he completely left the movement in the year 1930. He continued to teach his own philosophy though, but he didn't claim that he was God or anything. He was like, nah bruh, that's not for me. Number six brings us Antinous. 
In the Roman Empire, it was common for emperors to be raised to the status of a god after they passed away. Mothers, wives, children, you name it, you know, they would also sometimes become gods too, especially if they were closely related to the emperor. Emperor Hadrian, however, made his young male lover Antinous into an object of a god. The two were inseparable. So even though certain homosexual acts weren't considered bad or shameful or anything like that, it was still very unusual and uncommon to flaunt that sort of behavior in public. It was a scandal though, but the emperor was too powerful for anything to happen to him in terms of public opinion. And in AD 130, Antinous, he drowned in the Nile under suspicious circumstances. Some people say he was murdered. Some people say it was a suicide. Maybe he was sacrificed. They don't really know. But either way, the emperor was devastated. So he built a city called Antinopolis where Antinous had lost his life and also shrines were set up in honor of Antinous throughout the empire and he was worshipped as or at least seen as a god. Halfway in at number five we have Lou de Pellingbore. Lorenz Vorthuizen, he was a Dutch fisherman who would become known as Lou de Pellingbore, which is Lou the eel seller and he claimed to be the embodiment of God. Apparently, he came to this conclusion at the age of 29 years old, shortly after meeting his girlfriend at that time. And he claimed that he was immortal and had the ability to heal sick people. This led, of course, to some big, big, big problems when a 14-month-old child of one of his followers passed away because he did not receive medical care. So yeah, he wasn't healed. Lou himself passed away in the year 1968 in Belgium. And despite this, several people still keep faith in Lou and maintain a website to bring his teachings to the entire world. Imhotep comes in at number four. The oldest standing monument of cut stone is the step pyramid of the Pharaoh Zoser. While the pharaohs of Egypt were seen as gods, it was the architect of this tomb who would become a famous god. Imhotep was the pharaoh's chief advisor. And this pyramid has become one of the great symbols of the ancient Egyptian civilization. Within 100 years of Imhotep passing away, he was seen as a demigod with medicinal powers. And Imhotep 2000 years later reached the status of a full god under the Persian Empire. I couldn't do this video without including Hali Selassie. Hali Selassie was the 225th and last emperor of Ethiopia. He's also known as Rastafari and the incarnation of God and the Messiah in the Rastafarian religion. Although he gave Ethiopia a constitution which declared the emperor to be sacred, well, it was a prophecy from another part of the world that made him into a god. So Marcus Garvey campaigned for black rights in the country of Jamaica, which happens to be my home country where I was born. He also said, look to Africa when a black king should be crowned for the day of deliverance is near. This was taken to be a prophecy. So when Hali Selassie was crowned in the year 1930, it looked as if deliverance was truly near. Also, many Rastafarians trace Hali Selassie's lineage back to King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Those familiar with the history of Christianity, Judaism, and uh, Islam will know the significance of King Solomon. But either way, in the year 1934, Italy invaded Ethiopia, and in 1936, Hali Selassie went into exile. Now, Hali Selassie returned to Ethiopia in 1941, and in 1966, Hali Selassie visited Jamaica and was greeted by thousands of Rastafarians at the airport. Now, he didn't outright deny that he was divine. So yeah, that's one of the big reasons why he's still revered as a god by Rastafarians today. Now, number two is just, yeah, <laughs> okay. Prince Philip. Most people know Prince Philip as the husband of the British Queen. But did you know that he was also a god? On the island of Tana, a story exists of a son of a mountain god who traveled across the ocean to find a powerful wife. Now this god was supposed to have pale skin. 
So when the villagers, they heard of Prince Philip, who actually did in fact cross the sea from his home to marry one of the most powerful women in the entire world, they came to see him as being a god. Now in the South Pacific, groups have popped up based on having contact with Europeans known as cargo cults. And by performing certain acts, they believe that they will cause more technological advanced societies to deliver goods to them. So the worship of Prince Philip is just one form that cargo cults have taken. There are others, but I'm just talking about Prince Philip in this one. The followers of the Prince Philip movement hoped that he would one day come to live with them, but clearly that's not gonna happen because we all know now that he passed away in the year 2021. And we end this episode off with Jesus. Probably the most popular person on this list. Generally, historians agree that a man named Jesus of Nazareth, he did in fact exist. Now, most Christians believe that Jesus was both human and also God at the same time. While there has been a lot of theological debate over the nature of Jesus, Trinitarian Christians generally believe that Jesus is God in the flesh, God the Son, and fully God and fully man. Now, as God the Son, Jesus is worshipped by two billion Christians around the world, and Christians point to various passages in the Bible to support their claim that God would come in the form of a Messiah to be sacrificed for the sins of the world. So there you have it, guys. This was a look at 10 real people who were worshipped as God. Let me know down below in the comment section. Did any of these surprise you? Did they come as a shock? Or do you know all of these? I wanna know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video and stick around here to FTD Facts every single day for more entertaining and educational videos like this.